We've all waited long enough for this, so let's get straight into it. Today, Wahoo finally released the PowerLink Zero Speedplay Power Meter pedals. I've been using these for the last 12 months. I've done a lot of riding on these. So yes, today's review is a long-term review on launch day. I can confirm the delay in release of these pedals wasn't due to any technical issue with the pedals themselves. It was simply supply chain. The data from these pedals, both indoors and out, has been pretty much spot on from the get-go. I can trust them to compare other power meters to, both indoors and out. And I've already done this in a number of reviews here on the GP Llama channel. So that's the summary, let's get straight into the details. Pulling up Wahoo's technical specifications of these pedals, there's both a dual-sided and a single-sided version. The dual-sided version coming in at a claim 276 grams, with the single-sided version coming in at 250 grams. Power measurement, obviously dual-sided on the dual-sided, left only on the single-sided. It measures cadence, they have LED indicators, there's left-right balance, it has a rechargeable lithium-ion battery with 75 plus hours per charge, multiple Bluetooth connections, there are three Bluetooth connections available to these pedals, plus amp plus, which allows numerous connections, power accuracy claimed plus or minus 1%, temperature compensation, water resistance up to IPX7, the Q factor is 55 millimeters, so there's no need for us to have any discussion around wide Q factors and why they might be good or bad. These are a standard set of road pedals, stack height 13 mil, and the most important part is that they're speed play cleat compatible. In addition to this, they do support oval chain rings and they do have auto zero. Auto zero kicks in after 30 seconds when they're unloaded, so you're not clipped in, the bike is vertical, and there's a few other internal checks before that takes place on the pedals. Wahoo tell me they have addressed some of the lateral pedal body movement issues they saw with the other versions of the Speedplay pedals they've released, so that's a good thing. And I believe these are the only dual-sided entry road power meter pedal on the market today. At this point in time, the PowerLink Zero doesn't have any support for additional pedal metrics such as amp plus cycling dynamics or pedal smoothness and torque effectiveness. Having said that, Wahoo do have a long history in feature updates for their products, so let's see what they have up their sleeve for firmware updates for these in the future. I've also been told there is an upgrade path from the single to the dual, however I don't have any further details on that right now. Onto pricing and availability of the PowerLink Zero, the dual-sided comes in at $9.99 US, the single-sided, where well you do get two pedals but only the left side has the measurement, comes in at $6.49.99 US. In comparison, the Asioma Duos sit at US $6.99 and the Garmin Rally RS slash RK, the road version of the rallies, come in at US $10.99. Availability is right now, today. Inside the box, you'll find the pedals themselves, documentation, the USB chargers, the standard tension walkable cleats, all of the adapters that you could think of to make these compatible with your road shoes, and some pedal spacers. On the scales in the Llama Lab, the set that I had came in at 277 grams. One gram off the claimed 276 grams official weight. Just for interest's sake, I did measure the PowerLink Pod versus the Asioma Duo Pod, and here are the differences on screen now. The PowerLink Zero pod size coming in at 32.25 millimeters at the widest point, and the Asioma Duo comes in at 35.3 millimeters at the widest point. So they're similar in design, but they are different. Installation is straightforward, requiring only an 8mm hex key and the pedals themselves. Always good practice to put a little bit of grease on the threads and also install with a pedal washer to ensure there's at least a one millimeter gap between the pedal pod and the crank itself. The official documentation recommends a tightening torque of 30 newton meters. Now this can be quite difficult to judge without a torque wrench. However, I'd call it really snug, not loose and definitely not Superman tight. That usually gives me the best results. Once the pedal or pedals are installed, it's over to the Wahoo app and the setup wizard for the onboarding process, something Wahoo do very well. Now we click on wake up pedals, make sure they've spun around and are flashing. Both the pedals detected here. Okay, I go ahead and click pair. The setup wizard does a firmware check, so if your pedals did need a firmware update, that would take place right here. The onboarding then takes you through the configuration setup of Speedplay cleats if you're not familiar with those or doing this for the first time. If you have existing Speedplay cleats on your shoes, you are good to go. These pedals are compatible. Okay, I've already jumped ahead, but this gives you some information here. I'm installing the left and right pedal with an 8mm hex wrench and to 30 newton meters. Okay, I have some information on the charging port. Calibration required just to do a zero offset. Hit 
calibrate on those. Okay, left and right successfully zero offset. That's all good to go. Next is the crank length setting, which is important to get right. If you're using something like Zwift, Trainer Road, or Wahoo's very own system, the crank length within the pedals needs to be correct. If you're using these pedals out on the road with a head unit, such as the Element, Garmin Edge, Hammerhead Carew, etc., the sensor crank length setting will override this setting. So it's important to get that right when setting these up on your head units too. After having the Powerlink Zero for over 12 months, you can probably guess I've got stacks and stacks of data to go through. I have over 60 hours of comparative tests against other power meters, smart trainers, and smart bikes. Let's get stuck into it with a review of six data sets, starting off with the Kicker 5, Rival Axis Quark, single-sided, and the Wahoo Powerlink. We'll jump straight in here to the 200, 250, and the steady state of the Llama Lab test. And all is looking pretty good. Data is unsmooth there. 225, 228, 226. What is the source of truth? Well, let's just say the kicker might be here, the rival might be here, and the Wahoo is somewhere in the middle. Good enough for me, looking pretty good there. Jumping over to the next set, it's quite a few. Again, I'll try and skim through these. Here is the Stages bike versus the Powerlink. Just riding along, just riding along into a short erg mode test. 197, 197, all looking pretty good tracking there. Diving into the sprint, the stages overshoots just a little bit, um, but we're not looking at anything like 100 or 150 plus watts difference there. So that's all looking pretty good. And just quickly before getting into the latest Llama lab test, another quick review of some ERG data here from back in July last year. We have the Kicker 5, Rival Access, Powerlink 0, um, with a bit of a stop start here, which will affect the data a little. 235, 236, 235, no major separations, all looking pretty good there. That's looking pretty good over six months ago. Data set number four is the full Llama lab test performed just the other day with the latest firmware updates on these pedals just prior to release today. Now in choosing the Smart Trainer to use as the baseline for this test, I thought, should I use the Kicker 5 and the Wahoo pedals, like Wahoo compared to Wahoo? I'd always have a third wheel there, the Power to Max Ngico, which is on screen. But I thought I'd put the Kicker 5 aside for this test and put it up against something we've trusted for a while now, the original Tax Neo from 2015. And, well, the data's pretty good. Diving in here to the steady state 200 into 250 into the sprint, you can see there, three power meters line up quite well. We have 227, 230, 227, very, very close. Diving a little closer to this, the Powder Max is just a little spikier in the blue there. Um, just how it is. The Powder Max in Gico is plus or minus 2%, so all within spec there. In the sprint, uh, all looking pretty good. Um, what do we have here? The Powerlink Jewel 1184 versus 1201, 1212. Very, very close in the sprint. There's always going to be differences there with how they measure. Into the overs and unders. The original Neo kicking in a little hard, so that's why it looks a little spiky. But power-wise, what, 208, 210, 209. Again, what is the source of truth? Is it the Neo, is it the Power Max, or is it somewhere in the middle? Well, the power link is somewhere in the middle by one watt there. All looking pretty good. Uh, small dropout just there from the Neo, but let's grab those two little short hill jams. And look, the Power Max itself is getting a bit excited right at the top there of that and that as I start pedaling. Other than that though, what, 205, 210, 208, it's all looking pretty good to me with that data. A quick look at the left-right balance from the pedals. I have nothing to compare these two, but uh, I'm usually pretty smooth for this. Uh, within one watt there, uh, there's no outliers for the left-right. That's all looking pretty good to me. And the same here for cadence. I'll just select the whole lot. We have the Tax Neo estimated cadence, we have the Power to Max, and we have the Power Link. Uh, 90 versus 91 versus 91, ticks all the boxes there. So for the full Llama Lab test, the Power Link Zero passes with flying colors. The final two data sets I'll go through today really put these pedals to the sword. I had them on the gravel bike up against the trusted Quark Axis. We have a two and a half hour ride and a three hour ride to go through on all different kinds of terrain. Up, down, bumpy, smooth, you name it, results were pretty good. Diving into the first section here with some start stops and some up downs. 248 versus 248, nothing separating them there other than a few different recording intervals. Um, all looking pretty good. The Quark Zero getting pretty spiky there, but as you're hitting rocks and bumps and things like that, it's kind of to be expected, but that's all looking good there. No major separation. It means I have to stop the bike and zero things. That was all looking really, really good there. That was the start of the ride. Later on the ride here before I stop for coffee, over an hour into the ride. Again, it's all up and down, 221, 220, 
The Powerlink are road pedals and they're performing this well off-road, looking good. And lastly, over two hours into the ride where things change such as temperature, uh, my fatigue, 231, 234, all looking pretty good with a few stop starts through here and here, probably affecting those numbers just a little bit. But again, no separation or no consistent separation, which I have seen with other meters, which means I have to stop and zero things to make things line up again. That's all looking pretty good. Data set number two from a three hour ride and a nice long coffee stop in the middle. We have a sprint there at the end too, we'll dive into. Grabbing this data through here, what's this? We have 22 minutes, uh, 198.4 to 200. Again, some start stops in there, which will affect the numbers just a little bit. All looking really, really good there. What I'm looking for there is just a consistent separation that I see with some other meters. If you're playing a long game, you know exactly what I'm talking about and what I've seen with other comparative tests. That's looking good there. Uh, we'll jump into this section here through the forest. 167, 167, again, some stop starts. Uh, a few little short bits here and there. But again, to be expected with two different types of power meters, but overall, when I'm looking down in the head unit, there was no major consistent separation indicating any problems. Uh, let's jump into the short sprint here at the end. And all looking really, really good there. Uh, 42 tooth on the front. Uh, I've got a 50 10 on the back and the sprint there that's looking really, really good. What's that? Within two watts of that data point right there. Uh, 1244, 12.46. Wahoo, you have outdone yourself with that. That's up against the Quark axis. Now, Quark have been around for a very, very long time. The Powerlink, which is technically a version one of the product, it's matching it. Looking really, really good with the data that I have. So to wrap up my long-term review of the Wahoo Powerlink Zero Speedplay Power Meter pedals, the summary is, they simply work. If you're a speed play diehard and have been waiting for your power meter pedal to come along, these are likely going to be the answer. Look, even though this has been a long-term review and I've covered a lot of use cases, I'm sure there's some that I haven't. So I'm keen to see how everyone else goes when they start installing these on the bike. Get me across your experience in the comments below. I'm keen to hear if my testing is on the ball with how these perform for everybody else. As always, if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. To support this channel, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. To take that support a little further, hit that membership button. That's also appreciated. Thanks for watching.